Hello, today I'm making my own powder physics engine using JavaScript. If you want to try this out for yourself, you can do so at pigsquiggle.netlify.app, linked in the description. I started this last summer break as a side project and then stopped working on it for a year. Until now. In this video, I will be attempting to add fluids, other powders besides sand, bigger brush sizes, fix bugs, and probably other stuff that I will decide along the way. I always thought powder physics games were cool, and then I found Noida a few months ago. Noida is a game where you are a wizard with spells and potions, and you have to adventure through dungeons and caves, killing strange enemies and collecting more spells. Noida is built on a powder physics engine called, uh... Falling Everything, which as far as I know was actually made by the people who created Noida. Anyway, Noida reinforced my opinion on powder physics games, even if I'm apparently bad at them. So far, I've made a simple powder, which I made to look like sand, so I guess is sand. I made it so you can unpause and pause the game. I made hard sand that doesn't have any physics, which I will make into stone later. And I made the actual physics of the sand. The basic idea of the sand is the same as most other powder physics games, but I added some details to make it better. In most, if there is no solid pixel underneath the sand, it will fall down and gain some more velocity to simulate gravity. If there is a pixel underneath the sand, but there is no pixel to the side of that pixel, it will go to one of the sides with no pixel. And if there is a pixel underneath and a pixel to both sides of that, it will stop. In mine, I added a few more features. A pixel of sand will only move to the side pixel if it has enough velocity. This means you can make bigger towers with the sand even if they don't look sturdy. I also made sand transfer some velocity to other sand when it lands on it. This means you can make a very big thin tower and then drop one piece of sand from high up on it and it will all collapse. There's one bug right now where since I loop through each pixel from first place to most recently placed, if you put a stack of sand in a certain way, it will fall strangely. That's because if the pixels on top are processed first, they will sense a pixel under them and act like they're on solid ground, stopping. The way I'll fix this is by using an idea my brother came up with. I will go down for each pixel and stop if there is either a solid pixel or no pixel. I'll ignore other powder pixels in the same column. If there is no pixel, I'll pretend like no pixels are under the sand pixel and let it fall down. But if there's a solid pixel, I'll stop the sand pixel. This means a stack of powder will ignore each other every frame and only stop if there is a solid pixel at the very bottom of the stack. This system of skipping over powder pixels in a column can also be used for when powder drops into a liquid, since I can displace the liquid to the top of the stack. Alright, now it's finally time to code this. I'm not going to show the coding dance yet, since it normally scares away new viewers, so for now we'll have to settle for a time lapse. Go! Oh, wrong thing, sorry. Go! Sorry to disappoint, but I actually ended up not using this. I started implementing it, and many unforeseen issues showed up, which were really hard to fix, and each time I would fix one, another would pop up. Luckily, I can blame my brother, since it was his idea. Instead, I used my backup plan of just sorting the list from bottom to top. I was hesitant to use this at first, because I thought it would make the game a lot more laggy, since it has to sort every frame, but it actually didn't. I thought I'd have to implement a sorting algorithm myself, but then I found out that there's just a dot sort function built into JavaScript, which sorts any list in any way you want. I deleted all my previous code and wrote this one line of code that instantly fixed the bug. Now to move on to the next feature. I'm going to implement a material system in my game. Right now, everything has the same rules except for the solid sand, but I'm going to add a system where each pixel can be a certain material, and each material has its own properties, like color, weight, and how much it sticks to other pixels. While I'm at it, I'll also try to implement different brush sizes, since right now it's annoying to make large amounts of sand. Go! I didn't encounter any real bugs while writing this, and I think it turned out really well. You can use the number keys to switch between different materials. At the moment, I have six different materials made, and it's pretty easy to make more since I have a simple system set up for making them. The first material is stone, which is basically just the solid sand from before. The next material is sand, which is sand. After that, there is cornstarch, which needs more velocity to fall to the side so it stacks up in thinner towers than normal sand. After that is the unicorn flesh that I mentioned while explaining the materials. I thought it would be funny to add it to the game, so I made it a very slippery powder which almost behaves like a liquid. 
This is basically the powder in most other games where it forms pyramids and can't stack. The next material is glue. I discovered a bug when making this which doesn't affect the game very much right now, but it allowed me to make a material which sticks to itself in the air if I set one of its properties to zero. This seemed like a fun material, so I added that property to glue, and now you can make towers in the air without them falling. Also, they can only support a certain amount of glue, kind of like sticky pistons in Minecraft, so if you put more glue on top, the glue on the bottom will fall off. Glue falls normally, but if one of the pieces in a pile of glue has a slower velocity than the rest, it will harden. This means you can drop a pile of glue on another powder and then remove the support and some of the powder will stick to the glue. Finally, the last material is sawdust, which is kind of a mix between sand and unicorn flesh. It is slippery, but not as slippery as unicorn flesh, which gives it a strange property where if you make a tall enough tower, it will collapse on its own without anything being dropped on it. I also added the different brush sizes. When you scroll, you can increase or decrease the size of your brush, letting you place a lot of powder at once. There's no max limit to the brush size, so don't be mad if it crashes. This feature is actually really useful and fun to use, since you can make big blocks of powder fall at once, or you can just place stone easier without any gaps. Now I'm going to add liquids. Liquids will work basically the same as powders, except if there's a lower point that is reachable, they will move horizontally to reach that point. This means liquids will always try to find a way to the lowest accessible point. Also, if you drop a powder into a liquid, the liquid will get displaced above the powder. I'm also going to add a viscosity variable for liquids. The viscosity of a liquid will determine two things. First, the viscosity will determine the maximum distance that a liquid will travel. For example, if the viscosity is 10, a liquid particle might be willing to travel at most 10 pixels to reach a lower point. But if the surface it's on is flat except for a lower point 11 pixels away, the liquid will stay. I know this is kind of reversed since liquids with lower viscosity would be willing to travel more pixels, but I'll do some math like subtracting the viscosity from a large number to reverse it. This means a liquid with a lower viscosity like water will be willing to travel very long distances and will reach the very lowest point possible, but a viscous liquid like honey or slime will only travel a little and form mounds. The second thing that viscosity determines is how much the liquid will slow down things that fall into it. The more the viscosity, the more velocity is taken away from things in contact. This means water will let sand sink right through, but slime will slow down the sand until it stops within the slime. Time to code the liquids. I think you might be ready for the coding dance, so... So, I added all the things I said I'd add, and a bit more. There are many bugs I had to get past, or more like one big bug, which I'll explain later. I added three liquids with different viscosities. Also, one thing I forgot to mention about viscosities is that liquids with higher viscosities will move slower. It doesn't look perfect, but I'm still really happy with the results. The first liquid is water, which can sense lower points within 50 pixels and moves every frame. The next liquid is honey, which senses pixels 20 away and has a 1 out of 30 chance to move every frame. And the last liquid is unicorn blood, which can sense pixels 10 away and has a 1 out of 40 chance to move. I'm really happy with how these turned out, and they're really fun to use. I also made powder displace liquids and slow down based on the viscosity. The displacement of the liquids also kind of looks like a splash, which is cool. Now for the bug. The one major bug that I fixed while making this was that liquid pixels were somehow ending up in the same spot, causing weird bugs and making liquid seem like it was disappearing or appearing. I had multiple ideas on what was wrong, but none of them turned out to be it, until I found out the reason. From testing, I had discovered that it mostly happened when you dropped a stack of liquid onto the ground. All the liquid in the stack would end up converging into one pixel. What was happening was that the liquid pixel touching the floor would change its velocity to move toward the closest lower point, but the one above it would also move diagonally toward the same point. Since they weren't actually moving yet and were just changing their velocity, they both didn't sense that a pixel was there and would continue on. Since I apply velocity at the end of the frame, they would both sense no pixel, get the correct velocity, and then move into the same point, not sensing each other. It was a super simple fix once I figured it out, but it took forever to find the problem. All I had to do was sense for pixels where the current pixel was going to move when applying velocity, and if there was a pixel, I just wouldn't apply the velocity. This fixed the issue, and I don't really think I had any more bugs after that. Two other small features that I added were being able to press the greater than key to go forward one frame, and I also fixed a bug where pixels would act weird when falling in large amounts out of frame. Now it is time to move on to the next features. To make this video a bit shorter, I'll add four features in one coding segment. 
First, I will add gas, which will complete all three of the main states of matter. Gas will move upward at a constant rate while also randomly moving from side to side. It will get blocked by roofs and basically work as an opposite powder. Next, I will add fire and flammable materials. This was suggested by my friend and seems like it would be fun. Fire will detect any flammable materials nearby and have a chance every frame to convert one of them into a fire pixel. Fire pixels will also go out after a little while or if they touch a non-flammable liquid like water. The third feature I will add is explosives. This was recommended by a different friend and also seems like a fun addition to the game. The way I'm thinking they will work is if a fire pixel touches it, it will get rid of any pixels in a certain radius. The strength of the explosive will determine the radius of the explosion. Finally, the last feature is adding a user interface for the materials, because I'm running out of number keys. Also, before I add this, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to see more coding experiments like this. This has been one of my biggest and most difficult coding videos so far, so subscribe to give me dopamine. Now I'll code it. I added all the stuff I said I would, and a bit more, and now I think I'm done. I added this fancy pantsy UI with categories on the side. You, you can no longer use the number keys, so you have to use this. There are more solids besides stone, which are grass, wood, and TNT. There's gunpowder, there's oil and oobleck, which was requested by a friend. And there is marsh gas, steam, smoke, fire, and blue fire. Fire works basically as I said it would. It has no gravity, so each pixel just stays midair. It detects any flammable pixels around it and then spreads fire to those pixels, and it has a small chance every frame to burn out. When fire burns out, it also has a chance to create smoke. Blue fire lasts longer and also spreads quicker through materials, so it's just a stronger fire. Non-flammable materials smother fire when they touch it, and water also creates steam. The flammable materials include unicorn flesh and unicorn blood, which are very flammable, oil, sawdust, grass, wood, gunpowder, TNT, marsh gas, and very slightly cornstarch. Explosive materials like gunpowder and TNT explode a radius around them, removing any pixels in that radius. They also have a chance to turn pixels into fire pixels. They don't explode other explosive materials or fire, which means that you can make chains of TNT or gunpowder. TNT explodes pixels in a 4 pixel radius, while gunpowder explodes pixels in a 3 pixel radius. Gases are also less similar to reversed powder like I described them before, and more similar to reversed liquid. The only real difference between them and reverse liquid is that gases randomly move from side to side. The last new thing is oobleck. My friend requested this because I had cornstarch and I also had water, so he wanted it to make oobleck when they combined. If you somehow haven't seen or tried oobleck before, it's a non-Newtonian fluid, meaning that the more pressure you put or the more force is applied, the more viscous it becomes. This means if you punch a fluid like oobleck, it will harden to basically a solid and then melt into a liquid again. That's what I made here. If you drop oobleck, it will harden and then slowly go back into a liquid state. Also, if you drop something into it, it will slow down more if it has more velocity. The dropping things into it part doesn't work very well, but it works well enough. And with that, I think I'm done. You can play this at pigsquiggle.netlify.app as I said in the beginning of the video. If you want to see a part 2 of this or any of my other videos, tell me in the comments. The next video I'm planning is working on a new 3D renderer. I think this project turned out really well, and it might be one of my favorites. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, or comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Also, shout out to my brother Blocky Baker for helping with some of the ideas for the mechanics. His channel will also be in the description. Bye!